really a choppy day for the Dow Jones. Look at that up and down. The stock day, though, ended up relatively flat. The S&P 500 Nasdaq also ended up flat. For more on all this movement without much movement, we are joined by David Bonson. He is the chief investment officer of the wealth management firm, the Bonson Group. So tell us, what was driving the market today? You know, we, we tend to see big dips or big rises associated with news, but it just seemed like today it was all over the place. Yeah, I think that um, having a day like today where, you know, the Dow ends up being basically totally flat is quite uncommon because you're right. We've had big up days, big down days, but not a lot of flat days. And the volatility within it was up and down, but it wasn't severe. There wasn't big gyrations up and down. I think this speaks to the fact that the next big catalyst people expect in markets is next week when you finally get the Fed to do what we already know they're going to do, which is raise rates by half of a percentage point. But then the comments that come from uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell after the announcement, that's been quite a catalyst for market activity the last several Fed meetings. And we expect that that will also continue after we hear from him on this one. Uh, David, walk us through some of the implications of some major news. China loosening up their COVID policies. Do you think the market's going to be responding to that? Again, there's a difference between what the market will do in the very short term and a little bit longer. I actually think it is a bullish thing for markets. If you go out a few months, anything that is alleviating pressures in the supply chain. Right. So the more China has reopened and got past its silly COVID policies, then the more activity you get in global trade and more shipping and various aspects that have really been quite clogged up. And so I think that will prove to be more bullish, but it's not something the market would price in right away. Well, so that leads, I guess, to the next question, which is really the hope is, obviously, with with China loosening up these policies, that the global supply chain issues that we've all been experiencing will ease and abate a bit. But when do you think that American American consumers will actually start to see those potential benefits? And how much do you think it will actually affect inflation? I think it's going to affect inflation a great deal, pushing inflation down. But I think we're already seeing the benefits in the sense that every aspect of the supply chain has improved over the last six months. And goods inflation has gone down every month for six months. Most of the inflation we're feeling right now is outside of that. It's things like the housing market that is now starting Mm -hmm. to correct. Everybody knows rent prices are softening, not heating up. So you're going to feel some of that disinflation now, but I just think on the margin, it gets even better as more supply chain things open up. The shipping container costs have come back to pre-COVID levels. And right now, the backup of ships trying to get into ports to get things delivered, that's totally unclogged. So those are key elements. What we still are missing is enough workers. We still don't have the same level of people handling packages at places like Federal Express and UPS, for example, that we did pre-COVID. Yeah, and that's especially a concern around the holiday uh, the holiday weeks. Yeah. But you make such a great point, David, about how much we saw those shipping container prices rise, and now the fact that they are back to pre-pandemic levels is a tremendous change. David Bonson, yeah. thank you.